Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're gonna have Chelsea run us through a portfolio analysis scenario where we take one of our client's house hack from a couple years ago and look at it as a room by room scenario, as an Airbnb scenario, as a single lease, and then as a room by room scenario with some added principal pay down to uh, put the note on the lower amortization. So same property, four scenarios, and lots of spreadsheets. Chelsea, glad to have you back. Hey, Chris, so great to be here. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as we like to start these, um, I like to take client feedback and actually put that into practice and answer some questions that I get from clients frequently. Um, so the one thing that I hear often is, should I Airbnb my property? Um, or what if we move out and I stop running by the room? And so I wanted to kind of run a property through the scenario, one of our properties that does really well room by room, and see what it produced. So here we go. So uh, yeah. And so this is a property we helped the client close on in the fall of 2018. Correct. And it's a single family home, but mm -hmm. has a mother-in-law suite, so it's kind of like an up-down duplex. Yeah. But it's technically a single family home. Technically. Um, up in the Thornton, North Glen area. That's correct. Um, and the client house hacked it, has mm -hmm. since moved out. Yep. And now we're running some cool scenarios. Yeah, here we go. So we're gonna see, once they move out of the property, should they continue to rent it by the room? And room by room scenarios I often model out are pretty much every time when I'm just modeling them without property management. There might be some clients that have decided to bring a property manager on, but what I hear the most is that they either found a roommate that they trust to manage the property and they give them a small break on rent, which is not nearly equivalent to the cost of a property manager. Maybe it's $50 a month. Oh, it's a um, huge savings. Huge. Um, or they just know the house so well that they're really not that burdened by managing it. They feel like it's not gonna be that big of a problem. They're just gonna market it. They're gonna get some people in there. If something goes wrong, they'll they'll handle it. So I often model, especially when it's room by room out, without a property manager. Uh, additionally, there are only so many managers in the Denver Metro that will actually manage a property room by room. So that's another reason why. Um, so this scenario is saying you're going to keep it as a room by room rental. And of course, it's gonna cash flow really well. Um, we're using the initial numbers that came from that 2018 scenario, which this person put 6% down, which in today's world, you can put down 3.5%, so it doesn't have to be 6%. The interest rate was quite a bit higher than what we've seen. We're used to seeing now. It was four point eight seven five percent, which you know is relatively high. And the average rental rent that they're receiving for this property is four thousand and fifty five dollars a month. And they're actually not billing back on the utilities. I do find that in many cases that when it's room by room, the utilities are billed back because it's hard to split otherwise. Otherwise, it's just. You know, you just say to the person, you'll pay me a thousand dollars a room, and you'll pay me a hundred bucks for utilities, and that includes water, that includes sewer, trash, all the energy. So, you know, that's that's usually what I see. But in this case, that's not even happening. So, this is a very conservative approach to look at this property. But it is producing a really nice thirteen thousand dollars per year of income at an eight and a half percent cap rate. So, this is an amazing property. I mean, this property is doing so well room by room. So now somebody says, "Well, what if I Airbnb it?" So if we go to the second scenario, we so can I'm gonna, see. So I'm going to okay. recap right there. Yeah. So um, room by room, he's cash flowing thirteen thousand dollars a year after expenses and after the normal mortgage payment at Correct. four point eight seven five percent. Correct. And if we were to drop that mortgage payment or that interest rate, if we were to put down a little bit less on the percentage, you know, down payment as a house hack at three and a half percent, those numbers would change. They would shift. But this is, you know, this is what it was when it was purchased. Yep. So just went with that. Great. Okay. So uh, just over $1,000 a month, yep. room by room, self-managing. Yep. Now door number two yep. is Airbnb. Correct. Okay. So if you can actually, for me, Chris, scroll down just slightly into the notes section right there. Tell me what, okay. Okay, so I went to AirDNA and I used Westminster because North Glen wasn't an option, but it's pretty close and it's pretty similar. And I said, what's the average nightly rate in Westminster? And it was $136 per night. And the average occupancy for a single family home rented in Westminster was 77% with higher rates in the summer than in any other, you know, any other time of the year. So to be really conservative, I said, let's just say 200 nights a year it's rented. Let's just take income off 200 nights and $90 per season for 100 nights of the year and $120 for a the other 100 nights So of you the year. significantly reduced reduced occupancy mm -hmm. and also reduced the rates. Uh, the rates. Correct. So very, very conservative. Very, I mean, very. And you know, we are finding out more information here about how our DNA works and it may actually already be very conservative. It's possible that these are already conservative, but I don't like to model things out 
aspirationally because I just don't think it benefits anybody to make these highly aspirational. Well, yeah, goals. because reality has a way of, <laughs> of uh, not always in. working out. Exactly. So let's you know let's kind of bring it down here. So that's basically only fifty five percent from seventy seven percent of nights rented. Okay. So and so like seventy seven percent occupancy to fifty five percent occupancy. Correct. Yep. And you know an average of one hundred and thirty six you know per night to closer to like one hundred and ten per night right so like it's just it's just again or 105 per night so it's, it's a reduction it's a significant reduction i used all the same stats here so six percent down 4.875 percent interest rate and i said okay if you still have the same mortgage and the same bills involved here and you're not going to charge for utilities because you don't you don't charge for utilities with an airbnb you're covering mm. all of that then I'm putting in vacancy, and instead of property management, I'm putting in a 5% fee, which includes some cl- a little bit of cleaning. Well, the cleaning fee and the Airbnb fee, because you're going to manage the Airbnb, generally speaking. Most people don't have a manager. They won't even manage an Airbnb. So you're managing this on your own, but you're going to pay a cleaning fee and an Airbnb fee. Although, generally, when people Airbnb, they pay that cleaning fee it's embedded. It's embedded in the price of yep. an Airbnb. So it's more like if you needed to do anything else to maintain that, as well as your costs to advertise it on Airbnb. So this has a lower property management fee. This immediately drops us to a 2.65 cap. So we went from an eight and a half cap to a 2.65 cap, and we're losing around eleven thousand dollars a year. Now, did you run this at the Air DNA numbers? That's what I'm saying. So the eighteen thirty three per year is the average of fifty five nights. If you click on that cell. Oh, uh, actually, you can't see the cell, but um, if you click what on that, row? Uh, right, right there, here? yep. So if you look at that, it is 1833, actually. At one point, I had the calculation. I did 55 times, and if you do that, if you do equals 55 times 105, which is splitting the difference between, um, excuse me, not 55, 200 times 105 divided by 12. So what that's saying is if you got 200 nights a year at an average of 105 a night, that's your total annual revenue, and I divided that by 12. What happens if you took the 136 night average at 77%? Let's do it. So you would have to do first 365 times 0.77. So you'd have to figure out how many nights that is, which it's more than 200. 366 times 0.77. 282, 282. 282. 282. Okay. So then times that by 136, and now divide that by 12. So 31, so 3200 basically. Mm-hmm. So that almost, I mean, that significantly increases the rental income. It does. And I just totally changed your spreadsheet. You so did, it's tell, fine. Tell so me where go to look. Up. Now scroll up. So now you're cash flowing $2,000 per year. Okay. 2200 It's not quite what I thought it would be. Okay. So cash was 22 and mm-hmm. that brings the cap rate up to uh, mm, 4. Cap rate's actually sorry down here. Oh, that's your return that's on investment. Cash. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's 5.91. Okay. So you're in a good you're in a good place for cap rate because you're getting a great you, you know cap rate is is your income over your value. So for yeah. the value of this home, you're you're pulling in a great income with AirDNA. Now here's the reason I didn't want to go that you know, even though AirDNA is showing that, the reason I didn't want to do that is just because it hasn't been done before. You have an Airbnb at it. So let's go super conservative and say, what if we didn't get the 77%? What if we didn't get 136 per night? Now, if you want to model it with what the, the data that's out there, it makes a lot of sense. I completely understand why you would do that. I was just saying, let's let's kind of pull that back even further. Obviously, you're going to start losing money pretty quickly when you when you go to that level. But if you do get what AirDNA says or more, you could be in a really great position. But to get yourself back to an 8.5% cap and producing $13,000 of income, you'd have to make even more than that on Airbnb. So any way you look at it, it still is a little riskier than a room by room. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not a... You know, an Airbnb expert, but also, you know, North Glen, I don't imagine that being exactly. one of the hottest Airbnb spots. And that's a really great point. And another reason I did such a conservative, I took a, such a conservative approach. Most house hacks are not in vacation locations. Yeah. And it's the vacation Airbnbs that tend to produce the really high rental incomes. When you're in a residential area, 
that's why I went really conservative because I thought to myself, well, maybe some of those Westminster rentals that are on AirDNA data might be corporate rentals. You're closer to Interlocking, you're closer to yep. Boulder, you're closer to some corporate places. Some of those could have been corporate rentals and they were mixed in with someone who is literally in a more suburban location. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm not saying it can't work and I'm not saying there are scenarios where it doesn't. We have one client that I've worked with that is Airbnb and he's doing okay with it, you know, but he won't really know until one or two years into it how well it's done until about two years of historic data. I personally am very comfortable with Airbnb being in a vacation scenario, but you know, I mean, it can work. It can work. Um, now, if we move on. To door number three? Door number three is a single lease, which also is a very common question. So when you say single lease, do you mean one lease for the whole house or one lease for you know the top unit and a separate lease for the bottom unit? One lease for the whole house. Okay. So <clears throat> what does this look like? What this looks like is going to rent a meter or another data source that you're comfortable with. You can you can scan Zillow, you can scan Facebook Marketplace, and you can look at what rent, rental numbers are being produced for the size of the house. But this is one single person living in the single family home. And this has runs a very similar outcome to the AirDNA data that you used. So when you use the actual AirDNA data, it produced around $2,200 per year of cash. This is around 2,568. There's a big difference here though okay in in why this is working so the average rent and of course the rub so this person is fully paying for the utilities right so there's a little bit more income so this is just around the 3300 dollars you had produced for the AirDNA air dna when you um air dna data that you just used very similar rent numbers the difference here is that with one person living in the house there's a ton less wear and tear mm -hmm. there is generally a year-long lease and you potentially have the possibility of two things that have happened for our actual clients. Number one, someone wants to then buy you out of that house because they're so happy in it. Or two, they want to you know, re-extend their lease for another year. So there are some benefits to putting it on a single lease. You are going to drop your cap rate. You're generally going to drop your, you know, your income, but that's the case. And if you just scroll down a little bit further, Chris, this also includes a property manager. Okay. So once you get to single lease, you may or may not need to do this anymore because there are plenty of property managers that'll rent that will manage a property with a single lease. Oh yeah. Now, if you remove the property management, if you decide you are still going to manage it because it's a home you lived in and you just delete that 8%, yep. Now you're going if you scroll up, you know, you're going to a 6 and a 0.6 cap and you're at almost 5300 a year. So this is literally a choice of do you want to double your cash flow in order to you know, put the work in, or do you want to reduce your amount of work and half your cash flow? Mm -hmm. And that just comes down to you personal, know, personal preference. Totally. <clears throat> All right, so I like this, and then so investment the, four. Yeah, so investment four is the question that people ask about: How do I reduce the time on my of my debt of my mortgage, and how do I um, get out of this this debt scenario? more expeditiously. And what they usually mean is going from 30 years to 20 years. And so what's really neat about the house hack scenario is that when you're renting room by room, if you're able to sustain a room by room rental, which you know more and more property managers are starting to take on room by room rentals, it is becoming more prevalent in the Denver metro area. House hacking is a really much more common thing that people are doing here. You know, It could be very realistic to rent a house moving forward on a room by room basis for a really long time. And the reason I did that is that you really have the cash flow in a room by room rental to be able to add on those additional mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. So what I did here is I added on $375 extra per month, every month, all 12 months of the year for 20 years straight. <laughs> That's $4,500 per year. That is how much it would take to change the note from 30 years to 20. And so, if we add an extra three seventy five per month mm -hmm. in twenty years, it no, the note is paid and off. That's done. And so the reason I want to bring this up is that this really works well, room by room. Now, if you absolutely had to change this, and say I'm just going to go on a single lease, but I'm still going to make the additional payments toward the principal, if you had no property manager on the payment in the last the door number three you would have enough money to put a good amount of money toward the principal each year, but you would have very little cash flow left at the end of the year. This gives you a situation where you still have quite a bit of cash flow left. So what I'm, what I'm illustrating here is that if you do wanna reduce the time on your note and you wanna reduce that, you know, that, that scenario, then you wanna run that scenario, it's probably best to maintain a room by room rental. Oh, you get the most cash flow that way, you right? You do, yeah. yeah. So what's the best option? 
I don't know. I mean, how do you, how do you want to manage your house? It does. I mean, I think if you really want to pay off your debt quickly, door number four. If you really want the least work, door number three. Yeah. Door number two, I think, you know. I don't know. I, I mean, the, the beauty for us is finding people house hacks in locations where Airbnb is going to be a killer. And I think it exists. It definitely exists. There are places where Airbnbs are going to be really strong, maybe closer to the downtown towns, some closer to Boulder, closer to college campuses where people come in or constantly visiting for as COVID's coming to an end here. We had a few clients lost success, you know, near Red Rocks. Yeah, near Red, near like those really beautiful places where people mm-hmm. want to be. Um, there are spots in Colorado Springs, closer to the Air Force Academy. There are all kinds of things where you get a lot of of lot of visitors, and this can really work. So I don't want this to be kind of the end all be all for Airbnb being a house hack because there are going to be locations that are going to work really well for a house. Oh hack. yeah, yeah, for an Airbnb. And like you showed, if we even use the data, and if that data isn't even you know is is already conservative, it could work really well. So, but my my favorites are door number three and four. Great. Yeah. Chelsea, this has been another great uh, scenario. And again, this is all just part of the portfolio analysis that you're providing clients, which is helping to figure out, hey, how can you optimize your property? And then let's look at different scenarios and figure out what's the right scenario for you. Because clients, you know, we have four clients. They may pick, you know, four different scenarios based on um, all their goals and personal preferences. And And there's no right answer. It's (laughs) what's best for you, Mr. or Mrs. Client. And you're completely right. There's no right answer. And the great thing has been this concept that I'll model this out for people before they actually put the mo- you know, put their money down on the property. Because what they like to see is, great, I'm really thinking about this property. I want to know how it's going to work. And then I also want to know how it's going to play with the rest of my investments. So how is it going to contribute to my long-term goal? And so it's great to see this stuff on paper before you actually make your final decision. Chelsea, this has been fantastic again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. 